The first country is Miss India. Our first candidate now. Uh, this is Miss India, Suzanne Sublok. She's 23 years of age, a graduate of the University of India, and a model. Now, you've been a model in India for a while, but you told the press earlier that this was going to be your last year. Why? Because I think I've had enough of it. I've enjoyed it. I've reached the peak of my career, and now I want to study and do much more interesting things like helping handicapped children, which is my aim from the day I was from a very early age. Now, you've been to the United States several times. How do we differ from you, at least in terms of the women? The women over here are really beautiful, so are the Indian women, but we are very uh, mysterious. We have a certain mystery about ourselves, which we don't let go, and I think the American women are very modern. Thank you very much. Please wait for a moment while the judges give you a score. Miss India. She's Suzanne Sabo. She's five feet eight inches tall, dark brown hair and brown eyes. She's 23 years old. In my country, there's still the influence of genteel sports. As a result, in addition to jogging and cycling, I like badminton and cricket. Miss India! Namaskar, I'm Christabel Howie, bringing to you the message of peace from Madras, India. Miss India! Madhu entered the Miss India pageant just for the fun of it. Miss India! Uh, health and fitness is very important to me because my father has been an athlete and he raised me to be an athlete. And so for the last five years I've been working out regularly. Uh, this is Miss India, Madhu Sapri, who's 20 years of age, a model, recent college graduate, junior national gold medalist in track and field. You're a very serious athlete. Who's your coach? My father. Is he difficult? Not really. He's been very, at least like a friend. I fight with him, but we are back together again. But when he has to be strict, he's very strict. You say you fight with him. What do you fight about with your father, coach? <laughs> Most of the time, many times I go late night out for parties, and in the morning I can't get up for jogging, so he'll come and put water on me or, you know, pinch me or something, so that time we fight. Is he here in the audience? Yes, he's sitting right there. Uh, I don't know if we can get a camera to him, but he's saying, oh, she throws water. All right. Um, an alarm clock might have been easier. You're obviously well-trained. Uh, what sort of a person are you now with all of this heavy-duty training? Um, I can say that I have learned a lot after coming here, and I know how to take care physically, how to be fit, but after coming here, I know how to behave and how much I have to improve upon more. So I think I'm not perfect, but a little bit okay. I think you're a lot a little bit okay. Thank you. Please, if you will, step over here. This is Miss India. <laughs> Miss India. India, would you come forward, please, and draw a question from the bowl? And let's see what we have here. This is judge number two, Robin Leach. Robin, may we have your question, please? If you could go back into the past and change any event in history, which event would you choose and why? Uh, if I could change the past, I would love to go back to the day when uh, late Mrs. Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi was assassinated and she was killed. And I would love to get her back again because I think she had a very dynamic personality and not only India but all over the world they appreciated her for what work she did and I would definitely want her to come back. Thank you very much. Please wait a moment. <laughs> Miss India. Ladies and gentlemen, one of these three will be the new Miss Universe. <laughs> Lastly, Miss India, please. Miss India, we've asked everyone the same question, and you will receive the same question also. If you became leader of your country tomorrow, what is the first thing you would do? I think the first thing I'll do is uh, I'll open up a big 
biggest, I can say, uh, sports track and field uh, ground in India because I think we are lacking there. And that's the first thing I'll do. Very good. Thank you so much. If you'd step over here and join the others. And now Miss India. Congratulations, but the judges can only choose one, and if you're ready, the second runner-up is Miss India. The first semifinalist is Miss India Sushmita Sen. To prepare, Sushmita studied tapes of previous pageants with two former Miss India. We begin with Miss India. I'm passionate about writing poetry. Yeah, I'm not very expressive with people, and sometimes I find it easier to put down my thoughts and my emotions on a piece of paper. India, Sushmita Sen. She's an 18-year-old model from New Delhi who enjoys writing poetry in her spare time. Now, I heard you say earlier during the Parade of Nations that your country, in your country, love is the essence of life. What did you mean by that? Well, India is a country that everybody knows is, has multinational people, as in uh, people with different languages, people with different religions. And we have about 168 languages and people all live together. And there is, to quite an extent, a lot of peace, which is very difficult with so many uh, religions staying together. And that is why I said love is the sense of life in India. Thank okay. You. Now, you have got to be a, a very, very public figure in India. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, but you also describe yourself as a private person. Now, how do you uh, get the two working together? Well, I think every human being must have two faces. It's very essential. One which you have for people in public and one which you have for yourself. Because these two different things, when mixed together, makes you a person who has just a personality which is fit for everybody else but not for one's own self. And I think it's very essential that you have a private side to yourself. I have it too. All right. That's Sushmita Sen, Miss India. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 1994 Miss Universe Evening Gown Competition, beginning with Miss India. Remain, and one of those spots belongs to Miss India. Sushmita Sen. We bring in Miss India now. Sushmita, if you would grab a name. You have gone with Judge Number Two, Lawrence Larue. Congratulations! If you had the time and money to embark upon a great adventure, what would it be? Well, I think uh, adventure for me is something that I, I enjoy from within me. And I think children are the, the, the little things that can really bring in a lot of adventure in your life. And if I had the time and the money and I could do something, I wouldn't say I would do something for the children who are downtrodden. Any, any child is worth its while. I would do something for the children so I could enjoy my time with them, go out and have a good time. Thank you very much. All right, Miss India, stay right where you are. Miss India, Sushmita Sen. The first runner-up is Miss Columbia. That means Sushmita Sen, Miss India, you are the new Miss Universe 1994. Congratulations, Miss India. Sushmita Sen, you are the new Miss Universe 1994. The stage is yours for the traditional walk as the new Miss Universe. Enjoy your moment. Universe is from India, and no country has ever won two years in a row, so the pressure will really be on Manfred tonight. Miss India. I consider myself more of a human than just a girl or a woman. It's excellent to talk about all this about women's rights and all, which is needed today. But at the same time, we must remember that first and foremost, we're all humans. Miss India Manpreet Brar. She is 22 years old. As the daughter of a military officer, Manpreet has lived all over India, but right now she resides in Delhi where she is working on her master's degree. And I know when you finish your degree, do you know, come on up here, do you know what you want to do when you finish your degree? I know a master's is a lot of hard work. Uh, well, I plan to do it in human resource development and uh... The main reason for doing it in that is because I come from a country which has a vast population. With a country like that, if you use that population to your advantage, you're on the road to progress. Now, it takes a lot of work to get a master's degree, doesn't it? Well, just one step uh, ahead of a bachelor's. Well, I know that, but it's still a lot of homework and a lot of studying. Well, I think you just need to be a little regular with it and mm. uh, just a little focused. Not you, myopic, just focused. Myopic. Do you have uh, any spare time, though? And if you do, what do you, how do you use it? Uh, well, I think time management is the key to success. So I do have a lot of spare time. And uh, I spend most of that spare time uh, studying a little bit of graphology, which is handwriting analysis. And uh, I do a little bit of meditation and yoga also in the mornings. OK, great. Thank you, Miss India. Step right over here, Manpreet Rar. Miss India.
three. We have three spots left. One of them belongs to Miss India, Manpreet Brar. Now, Miss India, Manpreet Brar. And reach into the bowl. Come on. There you go. You come up with judge number two. That is Zakes Mokai. If you have found yourself in a situation where you are being discriminated against because of race, what would you do? There is a saying that goes, if your back is bent, only then will somebody climb on it. So stand up, stand up straight, and nobody will ever climb on your back. That's all. Thank you, Miss India. Don't go away. The first of the final three is Miss India Manpreet Rai. Miss India, step down here with me. I know that we're in southern Africa here, but uh, Namibia was once a German colony, so we have a little colonial architecture, and I think it's kind of fitting. You ready now for that final question? Here it is. If you had the power to do anything you wished to improve the status of women in your country, what would you do? I would give the women in my country the ability and the right to choose the right to choose their lives, the right to choose what they want to do in their lives. And only then will there be individuals, and not just mothers, daughters, or wives, but individuals, thinking, living individuals. Thank you, Miss India. Step right over here, please. Now, the final moment, ladies and gentlemen, the final moment of the competition. This is the vote. As each delegate steps forward, the judges are going to vote for her to be either the second runner-up, the first runner-up, or the new Miss Universe. And I want to remind our judges and our audience as well that this vote takes into consideration the answers to the final question as well as the judges' overall impression of the delegate during the competition tonight. So they are choosing the young woman they believe will be the best Miss Universe. We begin with Miss India. As we're about to reveal the name of the first runner-up in the new Miss Universe, let me remind you of the importance of the first runner-up. You do it, That's Jason. right, because, you see, if Miss Universe can't complete her reign for any reason at all, that means that the first runner-up will then become the new Miss Universe. Here we are, ladies. The first runner-up is Miss India. The first semi-finalist for the title of Miss Universe 1996 is Miss India, Sandhya Chin. Sandhya is 19 and a student and model from Bangalore. We begin with Miss India. Oh, black magic has been a spell. Sandhya Chib. And we start with Miss India. She is Sandhya Chib. She is from Bangalore, India. She is 19 years old and a media major who has actually trekked the Himalayan mountains, not once, but twice. Now, trekking the Himalayan, this is not just a little day hike, right? No, it wasn't. It, it, you go overnight, you're out there for a long time? Yes, six weeks the first time. No kidding? No. Where do you sleep and like, you know, what do you wear and all that? Uh, you wear really warm clothes because it's freezing. You sleep right. in a tent, and when you can't find, you know, ground showing through the snow, you pitch your tent on the snow. Oh, oh man, that's <laughs> cruel. Oh yeah, right, right. You love it. No, no, no. I get the hives when I get about a mile away from my blow dryer, so it's not going to work out. <laughs> um, so, so are you going to do this again? You think? Yes, I hope to do it every year. It was yeah. the most. Wonderful experience. I loved it. Maybe I'll just have a Sherpa guide move in with me for a while and get started that way. Maybe. It might work. Okay, thank you, Miss India. Step over there. That is Sandhya Chib. Tonight, in the 1996 Miss Universe Pageant Evening Gown Competition, we begin with Miss India.
semi-finalist for the title of Miss Universe 1997 is Miss Universe 1997, 90, 1997 is Miss India Nafisa Joseph. Namaste. We begin with Miss India Nafisa Joseph. First, let's get to know Miss India from Bangalore. She's a 19-year-old university student who hopes to get a law degree and work in the field of human resources. Meet Nafisa Joseph. <laughs> what, may I ask you, attracted you to the field of human resources? Well, um, good evening. Good evening, everybody out here. My interest in human resources basically developed from my interest in the situation in my country and um, from which I want to do law, carrying on to doing HRD, which is human resources development. It is my basic concern for humanity and for the poor and downtrodden. How nice of you to say that. How beautiful you are. <laughs> May I ask one other question? What do you think is the biggest injustice in the world today? Well, I would say the biggest injustice in the world today is to bring a child into the world and not even be able to offer him or her peace. Nervous now. Our sixth position goes to Miss India. India's Limarina D'Souza wants to be a child psychologist, loves to cook, and wants to open an Indian fast food restaurant. India. Miss India. She knows a lot about the Central America since she shared her studies with Miss Costa Rica. Join me right here, thank you, there you go. Now you wanna be a child psychologist. Did you learn anything about the way children are raised in Costa Rica? I think the children in Costa Rica are pretty much raised as anywhere else in the world because uh, the sense of family values in Costa Rica is very strong. And I think if that you have that in a country, you can, very be, sh you can be very sure that children are brought up well. I have to agree with you there. Now you love to cook and you want to open your own restaurant. What did you learn about the food in Costa Rica? The food in Costa Rica, well, their favorite dish is something called kaya pinto, which is rice and beans. And surprisingly, that's pretty much the same in my country as well. But Costa Ricans are not used to spicy food. They, they like their food a little bland. So you just sneak a little hot sauce and just watch them all just grab their stomach, huh? Nah, I'll just carry my chili powder if ever I go there. <laughs> okay, thank you, Miss India. India. India's Limarina D'Souza loves to read and cook fattening desserts. She obviously doesn't eat any of them, not with her body. This is an Academy Awards dress. It really is, isn't it? Someone should so accept an award in this dress. Maybe she will tonight. So beautiful. <laughs> Notice a lot of light pastel colors. One question I have, why is everyone holding their skirts? <laughs> India. India's Gul Penang is a model studying for a career in international trade and finance. India!
the delegate from India spent her world tour in Mexico. So, what can you do in Mexico that you would get in trouble doing in India? Drive on the right hand side of the road. <laughs> because. Because back home in India, we drive on the left hand side of the road. Right. That, that would cause a problem. Oh, wouldn't yes, it? definitely. Right. Also in Los Angeles, it would be a problem too. Now, you won a gold medal for debating. Very interesting. What hot topic did you and Mexico debate? Well, uh, what we did debate about was the position of women and what the social revolution has which has overtaken Mexico and how the position of women has really improved. But what we did actually, the topic of debate was that whether this, <laughs> this revolution occurred earlier in India or earlier in Mexico. Oh, and I conceded defeat. I see. <laughs> did it ever come to blows? Because if no. you need some help, Evander can help you over here. <laughs> no? Okay. No, I didn't come to that. <laughs> India, thank you very thank much. Thank you. India! <laughs>